In this lesson, we shall focus on mathematics. M-A-T-H, one for one, calculus, a UKZ module. We shall look at integration, focusing on integrals that run up to infinity in terms of limits of integration. Uh, this one stretches from, for example, minus infinity to exactly um, infinity, right? So we'll have a perfect opportunity to discuss these particular questions and make sure that we understand exactly what is happening. And we move forward, right, by trying the next questions. We'll remember that we spend some time looking at these particular questions, like this particular one, and we're able to do that last time. So we're trying to look at the kinds of questions we did not spend time on. Um, we looked at this one, we looked at this one, we looked at this one. Okay. We looked at this one, we looked at that one. Okay, yeah, in particular, here it's this particular one, the E. We looked at it, you know, and we, we solved it. And uh, we also looked at 2F as well, this one. We solved 2F. Okay, and so we are, we looked at 2F, this one. Okay, and then we had 3A. We had 3A. We looked at 3A. We looked at four, question four. And then we looked at 6A, yeah? And then we need to look at B right now. We did not look at B. But maybe we can look at A again. Should we look at A again to recap and then look at B and spend time on the partial fractions just to create an environment in which, you know, we can have, we can be on the same page. I feel that it's a brilliant idea. So we're gonna look at this particular question again, 6A. And then we shall look at uh, several questions on partial fractions to make sure that you're a bit more confident on the partial fractions. Right, and I'm glad that you're trying some questions on the partial fractions earlier today afternoon. Right, um, first and foremost, to look at this particular question, we shall actually have to write this one is A over X plus one. B over X plus one squared plus C over X plus one cubed. Plus three, you cross multiply, which is A. If you cross multiply the X cubed with this, it's gonna be X plus one squared. B, you cross multiply this and that. You have X plus one, and then you have C that way which means this 2x squared, this 7x plus 3. You multiply out here, and if you square these, it becomes exactly x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus b. You can write already here bx plus b plus c, which is 7x plus 3 x squared, 2ax plus a, bx plus b plus c. Meaning we have exactly 2x squared plus 7x plus 
x. Okay. Okay, the x squared is only one. One quadratic term, so you can only write exactly the the x squared. And then you have exactly twice a plus b. So that in the end, okay, so that in the end, then you have the following. It is therefore clear that at this point, a equals two. 2a plus b equals 7. But if a is 2, then it becomes 2 plus b equals 7. And then equals 3. So that now we have 3. a is 2, b is 3, c is 3. C is minus 2. So that we have 2x squared, 7x plus 3, all over x plus 1 cubed. A is 2. A is 2 over x plus 1. B is 3 over x plus 1 all squared. C is negative 2. Right, so you can put exactly negative 2 over the cube. Now, the couple of things that we should take into account and check if you add these, do we get that back? So that sort of becomes the question. So to, to check this before we proceed, you'd have to take the lowest common denominator, which is x plus 1, you cube it. And you divide x plus 1 cubed by x plus 1, you have the square, okay, so you have that. So You have three, and then you divide this one by that. And then minus two. So that now we have two x squared plus four x plus one, three x plus three minus two, which is one. Two x squared, and then you add the four x and the three x. You have seven x plus okay, let me see. And then the one and the one would give us what? Would give us exactly. So yeah, this one is a two. Okay, if you distribute here, it's going to be a 2 plus 1, giving us a 3, yeah? Divided uh, by x plus 1, you cube it. Yeah, just, just a warm-up, this one. Just a warm-up uh, exercise. So that, obviously, I mean, this can be broken down to these partial fractions.
Okay, so. So you have this. Okay, we have the integral of t over x plus one. dx, and then you have minus the integral of t over x plus one cubed like that dx. So this becomes the derivative of this one is one, and therefore this becomes the ln of that. So we have that, and then now you integrate this one using the same law that when you integrate u to the minus three du, for example, it's going to be 1 over minus 3 plus 1, u to the minus 3 plus 1, plus c, and therefore this is minus 1 half, u to the minus that, plus c. So it's sort of the same law. And uh, you'd have therefore minus 2 over, and then you have minus 2, So that in the end, we have to the lean of x plus 1 minus 3 over x plus 1 plus, if you divide, you get a plus, and it's 1 over x plus 1, you square that plus c. And therefore, this becomes the answer to the question 6a. Well, once again, just a recap on that one, it's just a warm-up exercise, but also an opportunity to think about what we need to do in relation to partial fractions. Uh, we shall spend a bit more time um, on partial fractions, just doing a couple of more problems to make sure that we are, all, we are on the same page when it comes to partial fractions and we can actually uh, make sense of these kinds of questions. But also, uh, we can be able to apply our understanding of the concepts uh, of partial fractions in attempting to understand this section very well. One of the most interesting sections, but also very, very applicable. So you have a perfect chance to learn this particular problem and we actually move forward. We look at the next question. Right. So the next question here is exactly what? 5x squared. Three x minus two divided by x cubed plus two x squared. So that now you have x plus two. Right. So what would this one be for for instance for the x squared? You would expect that it would be a over x, b over x squared, c over x plus 2. Okay? Pause to reason about this one here upon careful examination, but also you have a perfect chance to reason this out. And make sure you understand this. So, okay. So now, yeah, pay particular attention to that. So you get exactly this particular problem here. Okay. 
this is what we have. But now, then we will simplify this. You multiply it through by the LCD, getting 5x squared, 3x minus 2 equals a. Multiplying by the LCD would give us a x. Okay, the LCD being this one, you multiply it by the x squared uh, um, in brackets, x plus 2, so you get x, x plus 2. Multiply this one and this one. You multiply this one and this one. X squared, 3x minus 2, which is AX squared, 2AX, BX plus 2B, CX squared. Right, you have A plus C right now, and uh, you have the X squared terms, then the linear terms in X. which is this. So that in the end, then you have twice B. Okay, twice B is equal to negative two. This means that B equals negative one upon division by what? Upon division by two, both left and right. Next, we have twice A plus b is equal to 3, okay? Because you're comparing the coefficient of x to a plus b with the 3, and then now the b is minus 1. So that b is 5. a plus c is 5. So that in the end, uh-huh. Okay, there's a small thing here. Here I mean that you need to have, okay, the 2a plus b coefficient of x on the, on the left must be equal to three. Two A is four. A is two. Okay, then you have A plus C. Okay, A plus C is five, but you already have that A is two. So A uh, C is three. B is minus one and um, A is what? A is two. Hence, what we have here is that two X squared So that in the end, with a out of x, b out of x squared, c out of, okay, there is, there's no word actually, I mean, I'm thinking about this one, 5x squared, 3x minus 2 divided by x cubed plus 2x squared, right, which is exactly that. Okay, because obviously, I mean, this is justified by the denominator factorization. So you'd have the four, for example, that you have this one, 3x minus 2, then you divide by 
x squared, which is x plus 2. A over x. B over x squared. C over x plus 2. And uh, 2 over x over x squared. 3 over x plus 2. That's the integral. 5x squared with 3x minus 2. Two x squared. The integral of the so to do this integral, then you have to do the integral of two of x. Dx, which is to the lean of this. If you integrate this one is plus one over x. Plus three the lean of x plus two. Plus c. Okay. Uh, look at this one and make sure you understand it. In the presence of a question, please you can ask. But this would be the integral of this particular question in B. This would be the integral in part B of this particular question here and yeah. Very clear. Let us see as a constant, as the arbitrary constant of integration. But now we're going to move to the next one. Moving to the next one, we're going to solve the next uh, question on the partial fraction decomposition technique. Okay, with that, we solved B. Let us do this one. Right, so we're going to do 6C, for instance. 5X squared with CX plus 2. Which is X plus 2. plus five, which is A over X plus two. BX plus C over X squared plus two X plus five. Okay, so because this one, the, the X squared plus two X plus five can be written like this, but also, this one here is, is irreducible. The x squared, yo, this x squared, the x squared plus is irreducible so that in the end then you multiply out by the LCD if this is irreducible because if you look at the discriminant of it is b squared minus 4ac you want to check determine the factors the b the a the a is 1 the b is 2 the c is 5 A that four minus twenty. You have two squared is four minus twenty, which is minus sixteen. Negative and obviously you'd have non-real roots. You would have non-real roots. By dint of that, it means you have this one, six x plus two. You cross multiply, which is exactly x squared plus 2x plus 
Okay, and then we have x plus 2. So that then in the end, we have 5x squared. Okay, yeah. So you'd come to distribution, which is exactly x squared, x squared, 2ax, 5a plus. You come to this one, which is bx and x is bx squared. 2bx, cx, 2c. Giving us 5x squared, 6x plus 2. With this one here plus. to b Okay, and then you'd have like what extra term? So we have these, these and that. So like in the end, then we have 5a. And then 2c. Check this carefully. I don't want us to make mistakes. 5x squared and that, they give us the a plus b with the x squared term. 2a, 2b, c. And then we have 5a in that. So now we have 5x squared. A plus B X squared. Plus. Two B. Two B plus C. And then we have 5a. Plus 2c. So. A plus b. Equals 5. So if a plus b equals 5. That corresponds to a plus b equals 5 corresponds to the coefficients of the quadratic terms. 2a twice b plus c is equal to 6. Five a plus 2c equals 2. Okay, three equations and three unknowns. We need to find the values of A, B, and C. Six X plus two. Okay. Plus two X plus five. Okay, let's check this one. Let's do a quick check. So what we're gonna do now is to look at these particular expressions.
Okay, so we need to look at A plus B. So, okay. We have five here. Two, two, one, six. Two, two. So that then in the end, we have one, one, zero. Two, two, one, six. Five, zero, two, two. One, one, zero, five. Row three minus five, row one. Zero, zero, one. So you have zero, zero, two. Minus five times five is minus 25 with the two is minus 23. Like that. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Take a look at this and see if we can get some solution here. It appears that there's no unique solution to this. Okay, that's very interesting. I'll have to check this out. I'll have to check this out and see what's happening here. And see what exactly is happening here. Right. Okay, I need to check this out. Okay, yeah. Let's just check again. So you have the A plus B, 2A plus 2B plus C equals 6. 5A plus 2C equals 2. So that now we have 115, 2216502 equals 2, and 1105. Minus, minus 10. Okay, yeah, the mistake is here. Okay, because you multiply row one by negative five, you add to this, you get a zero. You multiply by negative five, you add to this, you get a negative five here. You multiply by negative five, when you add here, you get a two. You multiply by negative five, Right. You get um, a minus 25. My plus 25, you get a minus 25, you add to 2. Becomes a minus 23. Okay, take a look at that one. Okay, we're using matrices here. 
Now at this point, uh, you can switch this to rows and bring this row to the bottom. Row three and two. Zero, zero, one. All right, and then you need to get, and then here you have zero, minus five, two, minus 23. Okay, and then you continue with the matrix reduction process. At this point, you want to obtain You want to obtain a zero here. So the way to do that would be to multiply by minus one fifth row two. One one zero five. Zero one minus two out of five. 23 out of 5, 0, 0, 1, minus 4. And then now, you continue with the row reduction process. Let's check writing this matrix on the next board. So we have, for example, 1, 1, 0, 5. Zero one minus two. Twenty three out of five. Zero zero one. Okay. At this point, you want to get is zero here, row one minus row two, one, zero, two out of five, row one minus row two, five minus this, let's check, five minus 23 out of five, 25 minus 23 out of five, Two out of five. And then this one is zero, one minus two out of five, 23 out of five. We have the following as we continue with the reduction process. Good after row one. Row one minus two out of five. Row three. And then now you have row one minus two out of five, row three. So the row one is two out of five. Minus row three. Plus eight out of five which is 10 out of five, two. Oh, yeah, okay, now we're gonna do row two. Plus this one, row three, zero, one, zero. So row two, okay, this one is 23 out of five.
Okay, so you have row two. And then plus 205 row three. So row two is this one. And then you have two out of five row three come to this one here, which is minus eight out of five. So this one, if you subtract, we have 15 out of five, giving us exactly three, zero, zero, one, 94. Okay, with this mentioned, it means therefore you have the following, right? So it means that A is two, B is three, C is negative four. Yeah. So A is two, B is three, and you know C is minus four. Right. And with this mentioned, so if A is two. So we have got that A is 2, B is 3, and C is minus 4. Thus, we have 5x squared, 6x plus 2, you divide by x plus 2, plus five and this is a over x plus two bx plus c over x squared with two x plus five a being two over x plus two b being exactly three minus four divided by x squared 2x plus 5. Okay, and this means hence we are able to achieve the following and be able to find the integral of this. The integral of 5x squared, 6x plus 2, divided by x plus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 5. So you have the integral of this dx. We have this divided by x squared plus 2x plus 5. 2x. Okay, now when you get to this point, you need to integrate this one. But now to integrate this one, the derivative of this is one. There's a formula that says that if you have f of x whose derivative is in the numerator, the integral becomes the lean of f of x, lean of the modulus of f of x plus c. Right now, but what is the derivative of this? Now, it can show that derivative of this is related to that. So, by the derivative of the x squared, it becomes 2x plus 2. Yeah? And so, you're able to see, therefore, that it's not exactly that. So, you need to perform some extra um, algebraic simplification as follows. So you then say, if you have exactly this one, 5x squared with 6x plus 2, you divide by x plus 2 together with x squared plus 2x plus 5, dx becomes the integral of 2 of x plus 2. dx. The integral of 3x minus 4 divided by 
Okay, yeah, there's a DX here. Two X plus five DX. But look, what exactly is this? So from this, you would need that if you find the derivative of this, it becomes exactly 2x plus 2. The derivative of this is 2x plus 2. So you'd need a 2x here. Right, you'd need a 2x there. Meaning that if, if possible, you need to factor out in a way that is going to allow us. So if you factor out a 3, Factor out a 3 and multiply it by 2 simultaneously. So you factor out a 3, and then you multiply it by 2. Moving towards the margin, you have this one, x plus 2 dx. Factor out 3, multiply it by 2. With that mentioned, fit out three, it's going to be exactly two X. And then at this point, you fit out three, and then you simultaneously multiply by two. Right, if fit out three is going to be minus four out of three, you multiply by two, it becomes minus eight out of three, like that. So that's what you get. Minus 8 out of 3, you divide by x squared, double x plus 5. So we have this. Now, do you want a plus 2 to come out of this? You want a plus 2 to come out of that. And to get a plus 2 coming out of this, you'd need the integral. Plus 3 out of 2. 2x. 2x plus 2. Okay, then you have 2x plus 2. But you see, if you have 2x plus 2, then what should be added? This is how you can reason it out. You can say, you're going to add, you have minus 8 out of 3. You add something, call it y. Right, so in other words, in the place of minus 8 out of 3, you added 2, and you're wondering exactly what must be in this space there. Let me actually do that carefully. So you can say you have 2 plus a y, it must be minus 8 out of 3, okay? 2 plus something. 2 plus something is minus 8 out of 3. What is it? This would mean y is equal to minus 8 out of 3 minus 2. Minus 6. Minus 14 out of 3. So you have minus 14 out of 3. Okay, so that's what you have. And then it's x squared 2x plus 5 dx. Okay.
Right, so take a look at these and reason. So in the end, then you have exactly this. So, you therefore have the integral 6x plus 2. x plus 2. x squared plus 2x plus 5. Which is the integral. x plus 2. And then you have the plus 3 out of 2. Okay, because the 3 out of 2 that you're seeing here is going to be 3 out of 2, but you're going to have the 2x plus 2 with the dx. So you're going to have 2x plus 2 dx over this. And then now you have 3 out of 2 with minus 14 out of 3. The integral. 3 out of 2 minus 14 out of 3. 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 dx okay and we have exactly this we have exactly this giving us 2 out of x plus 2 dx 3 out of 2 the integral 2x plus 2x squared 2x plus 5. Okay, the three cancels and this gives us minus 7. 1 divided by x squared plus 2x plus 5. So that in the end, now you come to exactly this one. Now, completing the square, x squared 2x plus 5, x squared plus 2x plus 2 out of 2, you half the coefficient of 2 of the of x, minus the same, you add 5 x plus 1, you square it. So yeah, and then it's going to be exactly this here. This is 5 minus 1, giving us a 4. And this takes us back to the, um, the tangent 2 over x plus 2 dx, 3 out of 2, the integral of 2x plus 2 divided by x squared plus 2x plus 5 dx minus 7. The integral of, now when you come to this one, it's 1 over x plus 1 squared plus 4 dx. So we have this. And then we are just... Uh, Obviously, almost getting the answer, and we have uh, the following uh, to um, to do. We still have the integral. We still have the integral of five x squared with six x together with two. 
x plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 5 dx. So we have the following. So that here we have the integral, 2 over x plus 2, dx, 3 over 2, two x plus 2, dx minus 7 1 over plus 4 okay then you want you to do here to integrate this one you need to let the x plus 1 okay you must let this thing be 10 but you must make this the square root of 4 and then you put 10 theta and therefore it's the same as saying x plus 1 is to 10 theta. To the second squared of theta d theta. Like that. Okay. Meaning we have Actually, the integral of 2 over x plus 2 dx, 3 over 2 to x plus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 5, minus 7. Right, and at this point in the denominator, you're going to have what? You're going to have exactly wherever there is x plus 1, you're going to put 2 ten theta. And then you square that. We have the 4. What is dx? dx is 2 second squared. 2 second squared theta d theta. 2 out of x plus 2 dx 3 out of 2 the integral of 2x plus 2 x squared plus 2x plus 5 dx 2 sec squared two sec squared theta d theta So it becomes 4 10 squared theta plus 4. So the 4, you pull it out. Okay, you can pull the 4 out, and then obviously we have the 10 squared. We continue with the integration process of the 5x squared. 6 squared plus 6x plus 2, x plus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 5, dx. If 
it's 2 over x plus 2 dx plus 3 over 2. The integral of 2x plus 2 which is x squared plus 2x plus 5, minus 7. The integral of 6 squared theta d theta. So we have the integral of 2 divided by plus 3 out of 2, the integral of 2x plus 5, all divided by x squared plus 2x plus 5, dx. Now, now the 14 out of 4 is 7 out of 2. Six squared theta, six squared theta d theta. Which is two divided by x plus two. Which is x squared plus two x plus five. And then this one here is exactly what? It's exactly d theta because the second squared over second squared is one. Let us perform the integration all at once. This, this gives us two the ln of x plus two. Three over two the ln. Okay, this one is, is a two x plus two. We said 2x plus 2, 2x plus 2. So even here, it's going to be a 2x plus 2. 2x plus 2. Yeah, so, yeah. If you find the derivative of this, it becomes 2x plus 2. So that's the lean of 2x plus 2. If you let you be this. And then minus 7 out of 2 theta plus c. Okay, what is the answer to this? It is 2 the ln of x plus 2 plus 3 out of 2. 3 out of 2 the ln of 2x plus 2 minus 7 out of 2. And you can write it up. You can write the final answer up here. So in other words, this is what we are able to achieve. Proceeding from here, it's to the learn. X plus two. Two X plus two. Theta. And you'd remember that we said that X plus one, we said let X plus one be two ten theta. And this means that theta itself is gonna be X over two octan. Octan of X plus one excuse out of two. Check this out. Check this out. Okay, so we'll be able to get minus 7 out of 2 in that. So we'd have 
let's see now. Yes, yeah, so this one is octane. Okay, we have this. We have exactly this. Soar. Oops. <laughs> okay, here I meant that is the lean of the denominator. Okay, so here it becomes the lean of the denominator. So it becomes the lean of x squared 2x plus 5. x squared 2x plus 5. Okay. So, okay, look at this and think very carefully, but that'll be the answer to the question 6C. That'll be the answer to the question in 6C. Right, in which case, therefore, the next one to do is question D. Okay, we're trying to spend a bit more time on partial fractions just to, you know, create that general pattern of reasoning. By dint of what we've said now, it means, therefore, that we can say hands. The integral of 5x squared. divided by x plus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 5. And then it is exactly with this, plus 3 out of 2, the lean of the modulus of x squared plus 2x plus 5 minus 7 out of 2, the arctangent of x plus 1 out of 2 plus c. Okay, check this out. Okay, now let's look at part D. Now to look at part D, you need to look at the partial fraction decomposition of x squared minus x plus two divided by x cubed minus one. It's x squared minus x plus two all divided by, okay, if you have x cubed minus 1, it is x cubed minus 1 cubed. Difference of 2 cubes? Well, difference of 2 cubes in the sense of grade 10. So you'd have x minus y, x squared, xy, y squared. Which is x squared, x plus 1. which is x minus 1, x squared, x plus 1. 
So you have exactly this. We have exactly this. Right, so now we can be able to use the partial fraction to combustion as A over X minus one, and then we have PX plus C over X squared plus X plus one. Right, so we need to deal with this, and so what exactly do we do here? And also, I mean, you can ask the question, is the numerator, can it be simplified this? X squared minus X plus 2, can it be written as X minus 1, which appears in the denominator? Or what are the factors of this? X plus two. Okay, so you can see that it is no real factors. Okay, so okay, now when we're here, you multiply through by the arrow city, getting exactly x squared minus x plus 2, which is a over x squared plus x plus 1, bx plus c over x squared minus 1, minus x plus 2, which is ax squared, ax plus a, bx squared minus bx plus cx minus c. A plus b A minus B plus C. Plus A minus C. X squared minus x plus 2. x squared minus x plus 2 is a plus b times x squared. Plus a minus b plus c. plus a minus c, getting a plus b equals 1, a minus b plus c equals negative 1, a minus c equals 2. So we continue with this. Now, at this point, you'd have to form matrices from these three equations. Getting one, one from here, zero, one. 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. 1, 0 minus 1, 2.
row two minus row one. Row three minus um, row one. Right, we need row two minus row one. Row three minus row one. Okay, so at this point, you'd have to interchange rows two and three. One, one, zero. Zero minus one, one. Minus one root two. One, zero, minus one, two. If you add row one and row two, you add zero plus one, you get a one, you add uh, these two, one minus one, you add uh, minus one and zero, you get minus one, you add one, one, you get a two. And simultaneously, the third row remains unchanged. Moving forward. It's going to be row 3 plus 2, row 2. 0, multiply this row 2 by 2 and you add. It's going to be 0, multiply by 2, you add, you get a 3. Multiply by 2 and you add, you get a minus 4. Okay, and therefore this is going to be exactly be minus four thirds in the D part. It's going to be exactly minus four out of three. Okay, so we check this out. Let me make sure we make no, we commit no mistakes here. Right, make sure you commit no mistakes. Right, so we get exactly x squared minus x. I'm just checking something here, plus two. And then you have x cubed minus one. Okay, um, at this point, you need to which is one, zero, minus one. Zero, one, one. Zero, zero, three. Two, minus one, minus four. One third row three. Zero one one.
So that you have row two minus row three. Row one plus row three. One, zero, zero. You add these two, so if you add two with minus four out of three, you add, you get six minus four out of three, and the result is two out of three. So here you're gonna have two thirds. Right to add, you have row two minus row three, you have a zero, one, zero. which is one of three. Okay, we get that. We need to check if this is correct. This is correct, and therefore this means that our A our A is two thirds B is one third, C is minus four thirds. So that then if you are actually supposed to perform this integral here, but before that, it means X squared minus X plus two divided by X cubed minus one is a, can be seen as a over x minus one, p x plus c over x squared plus x plus one. So it's a over x minus one. So it's a over x minus one. p x plus c over x squared plus x plus one. And so, our A, our A is two thirds. Right, so what they were able to get here is that our A is two thirds over X minus one. Minus four over three over x squared plus x plus one. So that then the integral whenever I have the integral of x squared minus x plus two divided by x cubed minus one dx Okay, which is this one here is equal to the integral of two thirds over x minus one dx plus one third x minus four thirds over x squared plus x plus one Yes, starting from the margin, two thirds can be pulled out over x minus one dx. One third the integral of x minus four so that now you get exactly this. Okay, this one is gonna be very easy to integrate, but we have to deal with this one. So you'd have the X minus one, but you need to deal with this one here. And so to deal with that one, we proceed as follows. Right. So we continue. We continue.
And so these points will obtain the following. We obtain the following. So the derivative of the denominator, x squared plus x, would just be 2x plus 1. So we want to get a 2x plus 1 here. So we want these x to become 2x. And for that, so you need to multiply by 2 each other and also divide by 2. So you have a 2 out of 6. So you multiply by 2 and divide by 2. 2 thirds the integral. 1 over x minus 1 dx. You multiply by 2 and divide by 2, so it becomes 1 6. You multiply by 2, it becomes 2x minus 8. x plus 1. Okay, now this one, you want it to be two thirds, one over x plus one, which is exactly x squared plus x plus one dx. So here you'd need a minus nine. Because if you say 2x plus 1 minus 9 like this, then you can have 1 minus 9 is minus 8. So, yeah, you have minus 9. Which is x squared. dx. So you have the integral of x squared minus x plus 1 over dx. To get the following. Okay, let's check. So you'd come to the integral of is this one here is two thirds the integral of one over x plus one. Yeah, just to change this one to two thirds. One over x plus one dx, check this out. Okay, and then we continue with this one, one sixth, two x plus one integral. x squared, x plus 1 dx, minus 1 sixth, nine over x squared plus x plus 1 dx. Okay, by completing the square here in the denominator, x squared plus x plus one can be written as x squared plus x, the half the coefficient of x, which is one, minus the same thing, Continue. 
This one is one minus one quarter because if you square the half, you get one quarter. So if you say minus one quarter plus one, the one is like four to four. One out of four. Which is one out of four, like this. That's one minus one quarter. I mean, you get three quarters. So you get three quarters. So from one, you remove one quarter, then you must get three quarters. Right, so here you get exactly three out of four. Okay, we continue. So I need to deal with this. So now you'd have exactly two thirds. The integral of one over x plus one The integral of 2x plus 1 divided by x squared plus x plus 1. Now we'll see the integral of 1 over x plus 1 half squared plus 3 out of 4. Okay, this... These ones, these two can be easily integrated, can be easily integrated, but we need to integrate this one here. Right, and to integrate that one, we proceed as follows. We need to We need to be in a position to find. the integral of the the last one in other words to compute this integral here so we're doing the integral of x squared minus x plus 2 divided by minus one dx two thirds One over x plus one. Why is it x plus one? It must be x minus one. So this is x minus one. X minus one from the x cubed. So it must be minus one. You can see that it changed to a plus, but it's a minus. It's a minus. It's a minus. Dx. So you have this. Yeah, okay, we're back. And then now it is one over x minus one for this one, and then one sixth, one sixth of the two x plus one. Over x squared plus x. Okay, now the minus, 
9 out of 6 is the same as minus 3 out of 2. Right, that's minus 3 out of 2, the integral of that. One over. So you need to let. X plus one half. The square root of 3 out of 4, the tangent of theta. This means that x plus 1 half is the square root of 3 out of 2, 10 theta. This means that dx square root of 3 out of 2, sec squared theta. So at this point, you have two-thirds of the integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx. One-sixth of the integral of 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1 dx. Minus 3 out of 2. So that you have uh, this one here, the tangent of theta, but you square this plus three out of four. The dx becomes the square root of three out of two, the second squared, d theta. Okay. So this is two thirds, the integral of the x minus one dx, one sixth dx. So now you would, okay, so you'd have that and then this one here, Uh huh. We have that exactly. Okay. So this one is going to be three out of four. Yeah. So you have three out of two here, and then you have the square root of three out of two from the numerator, and this one is three out of four, giving us four thirds. Sex squared over sex squared is one. Okay, the 10 squared plus one is gonna be sex squared. So it's gonna be exactly d theta. This is two times two, which is a four. Four is gonna cancel. The three is gonna cancel. Four is gonna cancel. Three is gonna cancel, giving us the square root of three. Right, two times two is a four. And then there's four. Just gonna cancel and then you'd have the square root of three. Right, in other words, When we are, whenever we have the integral of x squared minus x plus 2, all divided by the x cubed minus 1 dx, what is this integral here? It is 2 thirds 
Okay, let's remove this one. So we'll be getting exactly two thirds. The integral of one over x minus one dx. plus one root of six, the integral. Two x plus one over dx minus Okay, the two times two uh, is four, it cancels, and the three cancels, giving us, leaving us with minus the square root of three. Minus the square root of three. Okay, let's check now, minus square root of three, and then you have uh, the integral of, of the d theta, which is actually exactly a theta plus c. And this is two thirds the ln of x minus one, one sixth of the ln, because the derivative of this is the same as the numerator, it's the ln of the denominator. Minus square root of three theta. Remember, everything came uh, out of the denominator, and the denominator became. It was x plus one half cos the square root of three out of two ten theta. So when to make theta the subject to multiply through by the two by these two here, so that it becomes two x plus one is the square root of three ten theta. You divide by the square root of three. We have the 2x plus 1 is equal to 3. So that in the end, 2x plus 1 over is equal to 3 equals theta. So that this is the square of 3 of 10. 2x plus 1 over is equal to 3. Okay, so let us check this out. So it's two thirds the lean of x minus one plus one sixth the lean of x squared plus x plus one minus get of three octan of that. I think that is some good time for us to take a break. What do you think? Well, let's continue and take one more problem. Let's do E. Let us do E. Right, in doing E, we have the following. Right, so we're going to try E. So I have the integral of this, but now let us do the partial fraction first. So you'd have the four X cubed, but now look at the degrees. This one is degree three, the denominator is X squared, X squared, degree four. Meaning that obviously you need to just uh, straight away proceed with the partial fraction decomposition technique. So you have this one, you divide everything. And then you have X squared plus three. Okay, we continue. So AX plus B divided by X squared plus one. 
cx plus d over x squared plus 3. Which means that you have 4x cubed minus 5x squared plus 10x minus 7. Right. Okay, we continue. We continue. So now, if you multiply it through by the denominator, the, this one here, you're going to have AX plus B which is X squared plus 1. Okay. So you need to just expand this one. Get AX cubed, 3AX, B, X squared, 3B. DX cubed, DX squared, which means I have A plus C mm -hmm. okay um yeah A plus C for the cubic terms Need to make sure to don't make mistakes here and then now you'd have the other terms like the quadratics quadratics will be B and D For this, linear terms, 3a and c, x, and then the constant terms, 3b and d, like so. Right. <laughs> okay, we'll continue. See, upon careful examination, you're able to analyze this. But what we're getting here is that 4x cubed, 5x squared, a plus c cubed. Your B plus DX squared and then three A plus C X and then three B plus D. You actually are able to see that A plus C now is 4. B. B plus D is a negative 5 for the quadratic coefficients. 3A plus C is 10. And then you have 3B plus D equals the constant minus seven. Okay, so it's easy to see that 
a plus c is four. 3a plus c is 10. Subtract this by saying 3a minus a by subtraction. So 3a minus a would give you give us 2a and c minus c is 0. 10 minus 4 is a 6. Dividing by 2 means a is 3. This one is B plus D. B plus D is negative five. You subtract this one by saying three B minus B is twice B, D minus D is zero. And then if you say minus seven minus Minus 5 gives you a minus 2. Dividing both sides by the 2 gives us B is negative 1. With A plus C equals 4. which means that A is three. Which means that C is equal to one. And then if B is negative one in the place of D, B is equal to negative one with B plus D. B is negative one. Plus D is negative 5. D is negative 4. Okay. So now you're going to have exactly that. Check this out. Right, let's check this out. Continue. Right. Okay, let's continue. So if the integral of four x cubed minus five x squared, 10 x minus seven, all divided by x squared plus one, x squared plus three dx. So, we can see that, um, you remember that we started with this and we had AX plus B and then CX plus D. Right, you can even remove the integral sign for now. And then remember that this was equal to AX plus B over X squared plus one. CX plus D over X squared plus three. What is the A? The A is three and the B is negative one. Three and negative one, giving us three X minus one over X squared plus one. C. C and the D, one and minus four over X squared plus one. Okay, I mean, 
First things first, it's very important to always check if these answers are correct. Very important to have an idea of the fact that this partial fraction decomposition is, is actually very, very correct, you know. Because, you know, there's always a chance of human error here. And so now, if you actually can be in a position to... Um, to get these, then you would have the most important uh, things to do here. Plus one, plus three. Right, so. Right, let's think about this a little bit and just check if, I mean, the partial fraction decomposition is correct. Okay, we're just uh, dealing with the, the, the integration of partial fractions. So now you'd have the three X minus one, the X minus four. I must indicate that it is correct. I just check that this decomposition is correct and therefore we can perform the integral. So that when you actually can do are doing the integral of 4x cubed minus 5x squared, 10x minus 7, x squared plus 1, x squared plus 3dx. It is 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 1dx the integral of x minus 4 over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay. So now you have to do this particular integration. To do this particular integration, we shall proceed as follows. Now I'm going to do it on the next slide because it's nice, easy, and short. So to find uh, the integral of 4x cubed minus 5x squared, 10x minus 7 over, all over, x squared plus 1, x squared plus 3, which is 3x. Okay. Which is X minus four over X squared plus one DX. Which is the integral of 3x over x squared plus 1 dx. 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. The integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx. 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, now the derivative of this x squared becomes 2x. So you'd have this one, you want it to be 2, so you'd have 3 out of 2. 2x over x squared plus 1 dx. Now the integral of this one, is octan. So let's leave it for now. This one, the ratio of this one is 2x, so you'd have to introduce a 2x. Plus 1 dx. 
the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Taking it to the top, top, top here. 3 over 2. The integral of these, therefore, if you differentiate these, you get 2x, and therefore it becomes the ln of the denominator x squared plus 1. That is for the e integral. Continue with the integration process. Come to this one. Right. Come to this one, and then that is the part E. And then now the integral of this one, it's the, it's the minus actan of X. Which is the ln. of x squared plus 1 minus 4 at 10 of x plus c. Ah, okay. This is small type of here, check. This is x squared plus 1. This one is plus 3. See what I did here. Uh, let me see. Okay, this one is 3. I'm wondering why I made it that, because it must be 3. x squared plus 1, x squared plus 3. Check that. So it must be a plus 3. Okay, so this is a plus 3. Check, check it out. So this is going to be a plus 3. Okay, it's going to be a plus 3, plus 3. Okay, so it's going to make pretty small change here, or well, at least some change in the answer. Now, I, I would want us to zoom into the kind of the integral you'd get here. Okay, it will be just for this part, for the last part. Okay, let us check for the other first few parts. It's going to be very, very easy. Like for this one here in the part E, this one is going to be three out of two. X squared plus one minus this one is octan of x plus this one is the derivative of this so it's it's one half the limb of x squared plus three okay three over two the lean of that one half the lean of that minus that one that and we just need to get this one so to get this one we'd have to let x be the square of 3 10 theta so x squared theta d theta
which is 3 times squared. dx square root of 3 6 square theta d theta. Meaning you have square root of 3 out of 3, 6 squared, and the 10 squared plus 1 is going to be 6 squared, and this gives us only d theta. And you have to find the integral of d theta, which is Okay, one over the square of the square root of three out of three is gonna be one over the square root of three. Making this one here, it's gonna be like one over the square root of three. And this is gonna be theta plus c. But this gives us one over the square root of three, the theta. The theta is arc 10 of x over the square root of 3. You can see, but we have the minus 4 here, which is going to be minus 4 square root of 3 arc 10 of x over the square root of 3 plus c. Okay, so check that, but this is the answer anyway. And then we are having one last question on the partial fractions, and then we move to other things. Let us spend some time to look at this particular question. But first and foremost, we look at the fact that the degree of the numerator is four, and the degree of the denominator is um, is a it's it's a three, meaning that we can perform long division. Okay, so let us manipulate this. So you have four x to the fourth cubed minus twenty two x minus ten. Four x squared plus 4x minus 8. You divide this one by 2x cubed, then you get only x. Is it 2x? Multiply this one by the 2x cubed, you get actually exactly 2x. Multiply this by that, 2 times 2 is a 4x cubed times x is x to the fourth power. This times that, it's minus 8x cubed plus 8x squared minus 16x. And then when you subtract, you get a zero there. And then this one and the negative there, it's gonna be a plus, getting us actually exactly 4x cubed, negative this, which is minus x squared. This and this, 6 minus 6x minus 10. Okay, take a look at this and make sure that we get the correct the correct thing. Moreover, now this is what we have, and then we perform further division. We have this one divided by the two x cubed. You get exactly a two. Multiply this, which is four x cubed minus eight x squared plus 8x minus 16. Okay, this one, you add this and it becomes 9, um, becomes 7x squared. Seven. And then this one is minus 
14x and then this one is plus a 6. Right, okay, let us pause to make sure that this particular division is correct and it's division that does not have any sorts of mistakes in it. So with 4x to the fourth power minus 4x cubed plus 7x squared minus 22x minus 10 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. Okay, I'm, ju I'm just trying to check that there's no there's no error here in any way because this is very important for us. All right. Let us check this out. Let us check this out. It looks very, very correct. And therefore, now it means that we can write the following. We can be able to write that 4x to the fourth power. Okay, so we can be able to write that 4x to the fourth power, this one, minus 4x cubed plus 7x squared minus 22x minus 10 divided by 2x cubed minus 4x squared it is the quotient the quotient is so if you divide, you get the quotient and then remainder this. Remainder the, this one. So this one is the remainder. Right. 7x squared. Minus 14x. Plus 6. Divided by 2x cubed. For x minus 8. All right. Now you have this. But now at this point, though, you need to perform further algebraic manipulations. Yeah. And if you do that, you'll be able to obtain the following. To start with, the 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x So this is going to be uh, minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 8, which is a 2x, giving us exactly x squared minus 2x. Let's see. Okay, let's take out 2x squared and see what happens. Yeah. So if you take out 2x squared, Take out 2x squared. Take out 2x squared.
So you have minus four here, which is x minus two. x minus two is a common factor. Pulling out x minus two would leave us with two x squared minus minus four. And then you have the x minus two Okay, with the two outside from the first, from the uh, second set of brackets, you have two, x minus two, and then you're gonna have x squared minus, x squared minus two. And then these can be seen as x minus two. Right, then you can perform the further factorization um, as uh, it can be seen clearly. In other words, what we're getting here is 2x plus 2, then we have 7x squared minus 14x plus 6 over 2x minus 2. Right, and then out of this, you can write x minus the square root of 2, and then you can write x plus the square root of 2. Right, and then when you get to this particular point, you can be able to write this out with so much ease in other words in other words whenever we have 4x to the fourth power minus 4x cubed 7x squared minus 22x minus 10 all divided by 2x cubed minus 4x squared, 4x minus that. So now, plus, okay, this point, then you have this. The seven x squared, the seven x squared minus fourteen x plus six. Which is two into x minus two. X minus the square root of two and then x plus the square root of two. So this would be a over 2x minus 2 plus b over x minus the square root of 2, c over x plus the square root of 2, like this. Multiplying through by the LCD, and the LCD is this, which is the same as that. You'll be able to get 4x to the fourth power minus 4x cubed, 7x squared, 22x minus 10. Okay. We multiply it through by the LCD and then you're gonna have exactly this part here. Let me see what the best way to do this is. Okay, the best way to do this is to focus on the on the partial 
fraction decomposition of this. Right, so meaning that you can just focus on this one and you multiply it through by the LCD so that we have 7x squared minus 14x plus 6. Yeah, in other words, you focus on this one. Focus on this. But also you focus on this, only this. Okay, now. Okay, now if you deal with this, then you multiply by the LCD. It's going to be A into, okay, you multiply, so this, uh, this uh, X minus 2 with the 2 is going to cancel, then you're going to be left with this and that, which is X squared minus 2 plus B. You would have 2X minus 2. Okay, so x minus 2 and then x minus the square root of 2. Just exactly this way. Now this one is an interesting one. I'm going to use a different method to solve because of the Availability of the square root. If x is 2. If x is 2, this one is going to be 0. That is going to be 0. If x is 2, you're going to put 2 here. 2 squared minus 14 times 2. plus 6. Okay, if a, if x is 2, then you put it here. It's going to be 2 squared minus 2. Then the rest are going to be 0, but the meaning is if that 2 squared minus 2 gives us exactly, it's like 4 minus 2 giving us 2a. Okay, so this one, 7 times 2 squared, which is 7 times 4, giving us exactly 28 minus 28. 28 minus 28, because 14 by 2 is also 28, which is 0. This gives us exactly 2a is equal to 6. a is 3. a gives us exactly 3. a gives us exactly 3. So now you're going to also do the other one when x equals uh, the square root of 2. So we're going to do it maybe in this place here. If x is, let's first do the square root of 2. If you put the square root of 2 here, this one is going to be 0. If you put the square root of 2 here, you square the square root of 2, it's going to be 2 minus 2, it's going to be 0. If you put the square root of 2 here, this one is going to be 2 to the square root of 2. Plus 2 to the square root of, times 2 to the square root of 2 is going to be 4 to the square root of 2. Right, so it's going to be 4. Two to the square root of two, four to the square root of two, two to the square root of two, four to the square root of two. So four to the square root of two b so that we have seven. Your square root of the square root of two becomes two minus fourteen to the square root of two plus six. Okay, take a look at that. So 
So we're getting four to the square root of two. The square root of two minus two b. And then it is minus 14 to the square root of two. Then we have 14 plus seven by two is 14 plus six, which is what? 20. Right, and at this point, you have b is equal to, you can divide through getting minus 14 to the square root of two plus 20 divided by four to the square root of two, square root of two minus two. Think about it, but we are going on. But uh, we are going on. Okay, we are going on. Right, we are going on and on and on and on. Let me see what we got here. I think that there must be a small error. Let me see. Uh-huh. Okay, there must be a small error. Uh, let me see, I'm trying to check, check, check over the divisor. Uh -huh. What are the factors of the divisor? Okay, I'm trying to see if there's no mistake here. Okay, just one second. So you have two x cubed. Right, so you have two x cubed minus four x squared. Plus four x minus eight. Okay, see this is more error. Let me see if I can detect that error here. So if you come here, you pull out 2x squared. You have x minus 2, and you pull out, this must be plus. See, there is a mistake. So this would have to be a plus. Pulled out just 4. And therefore, you come to this point. It's going to make the work a bit less because we're writing too much now. So you come to this point, and this one is going to be plus here. When you put out the R, it's going to be plus. Two x squared plus four. Uh, Oh, <laughs> so now, okay, pull out the two here, giving us exactly x squared plus two. x squared plus two, so we are. So it's going to make a couple of changes for us. In particular, right, in particular, because of that sign, Rectification, so this is going to be much simpler than ever. Okay.
so so now what we then have is the following so we're going to have exactly this so that in the end then you're going to have this Plus, in the denominator, we have 7x squared minus 14x plus 6. 7x squared minus 14x plus 6. All divided by the 2 into x minus 2. And then you have x squared plus 2. Okay. Meaning you have this one, and then you continue with the partial fraction decomposition. This is going to be a over 2x minus 2. Then you add bx plus c over x squared plus 2. Like we said, so we're going to deal with this one. And also simultaneously deal with this one here. So that now you have exactly 7x squared minus 14x plus 6, which is equal to, so you multiply by the LCD, so it's going to be exactly, if you multiply by the LCD, which is this, you multiply this, so the 2 into x minus 2 is going to cancel, leaving us with a multiplied by x squared plus 2. bx plus c, so you multiply it by the LCD, which is this, um, which is, uh, yeah, this is going to have a cancel, so this one is, if you multiply it by this LCD with this, um, the x squared minus 2 is going to cancel, leaving us with 2, x minus 2, like that. Okay. So now, the couple of things that remain very important here for us to take into account, but we can be able to get with three of this. So if x is two, then you can get one of this, you can get a. Then we can vary the others. But simultaneously, you can try to do this, uh, seven x squared minus 14 x plus six, which is this one plus 2a plus. So this one is going to be like 2x times bx, 2bx squared. So bx times 2x, 2bx squared. bx times minus 2, minus 4bx. plus 2cx. Yeah. Minus 4, which is minus 4c. Okay. But well, then in the end, Okay, we get this. Giving us 7x squared minus 14x plus 6. Which is a plus 2b. x squared. Okay, then these two will cancel out. Two C minus four B. And then Okay. So now you would have to um 
find the right coefficients. At this point, it means that A together with twice B must be seven. Also minus four B twice C is minus 14. 2a minus 4c is 6. Okay. All right. So, if we can take x to be 2, then this will be 0, and that is going to give us the value of a. And then you can get the B and the C. That's one way to do it. So we can say, for example, if X is 2, put it here. So this is going to disappear. And if X is 2, then it's going to be A with the 2 squared plus 2 is equal to 7, 2 squared minus 14 times 2 plus 6. Does that equal earlier? Okay, but now this is going to be plus, so it's 2 squared, so it's a 4 plus 2, it gives us a 6a. Where are you? Now, this one is 28 minus 28, giving us 6, which means that a is 1. All right. <laughs> okay, think with me, please. Okay, if a is 1, then you come here. We have a together with 2b equals 7. a is 1. 1 plus 2b is 7. 2b is 6. b is 3. Once you get that b is 3, you need to get a c. Can you use this one? Can you use 2a minus 4c is 6. 2a is what? a is 1, the c we don't know, and this is the case which means 4C is 2 minus 6. This to bring. C is a minus 1. Okay, now let's reason. Okay. Now we are back here, and I want us to look at these very carefully. So what we have here now is I want to just make sure that there's no there are no errors here before we proceed. So I'm trying to pause to reason and make sure that we do not have any mistakes before we move on because it's going to affect the integrity of our solution. So it's very important that everything is clean so that we are on point, but also we do not waste our time moving forward with mistakes in our calculations. Two X cubed. Four X squared. 4x, 4x. Okay, we get these exactly. Okay, let's re uh, reason this out. You see, what we're able to achieve out of this is the fact that whenever we have four everything here, this one, Whenever we have 4x to the fourth power minus 4x cubed, 7x squared, which is 2x cubed plus 4x minus 8. Okay, then it's what? It is 2x plus 2. Okay, and then now you have the A here. What is the A? 
the A is one. So it's one over two, one over two X minus two. The B, the B is three and the C is minus one. So it's three X minus one. Divided by x squared plus 2. Okay. Now we are in business and we want to just get the integral of this. So the integral of 4x to the fourth power minus 4x cubed. 7x squared, 22x minus 10, all divided by 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 8. Two x plus 2. The integral of 1 over Okay. Okay, so in the end, this one can easily integrate. This one can easily integrate. The issue is here. So let us start from the margin a little bit and write a little bit more. So we'd have the integral of 2x plus 2 dx, which is 1 over x minus 2. Three over two. Two x over x squared plus two. Okay, because then if you differentiate this, you get that back. But these two cancels giving us the 3x minus the integral of 1 over x squared plus 2 dx. Integrating this, we are done. What we then need to do is find the integral of the 2x squared. So the integral of the 2x squared is just going to be x squared. The integral of 2 is going to be 2x. This one is going to be the ln of x minus 2. Three over two, the ln of the denominator, x squared plus two. This one does pause to reason this out, but to reason this out, we need to find the integral of this. So, okay, to find the integral of this, let me just extract the integral so that anybody can follow um, what we're doing here. So we actually need to find the integral of one over x squared plus two dx. We let, we let x be the square root of two, 10 theta dx square root of 2 sec squared theta d theta like this so that when you get this you'd come and then uh, this integral So in the denominator, if you square the x, you square this one. It's just going to become 2 10 squared. Plus 2. And the derivative becomes the square root of 2. Sec squared theta d theta. And then the 2. 
is pulled out, which is 1 over the square root of 2. The 6 squared over 6 squared becomes 1. Theta, d theta. And the integral of this becomes 1 over square root of 2 theta plus c. And the theta out of this becomes x over the square root of 2 octan. So that becomes octan of x over the square root of 2 plus c. But obviously, you are dealing with this. You are dealing with this. Right, you are dealing with this. Dealing with this, then you have uh, 1 over the square root of 2 outside. Act 10 of x over the square root of 2 plus c. Let's see. Like that. And this is the answer. Right, in other words, we are then saying this integral in f this here, it runs up to there, it goes up to there, it goes right through there, up to the C, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. Okay, like that. So that is the integral of the F part. Okay, you're good. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I think I think it was also having this discussion, and uh, we actually can practice with more things with exactly more things more integration by parts methods that we can learn any questions so far any question right thank you so much for joining us it was awesome having this discussion until next time thank you take care and goodbye